Hi, today is my second presentation. Thank you for all your very nice and positive comments at the end of the previous one. That's been very encouraging. Today morning, the newspapers were full of so much about Remdesivir not being available and that it was being sold in the black market. So I thought I'll take this opportunity to make you aware of what is actually the treatment for COVID. That's usually falls into five parts. The first part is the oxygen. The second part is the anti-inflammatory or which reduces the inflammation. The third part is the antiviral therapy in which remdesivir comes. Then the fourth part is anticoagulant that is to prevent the blood clots from forming in various parts of the body. And then some people even add antibacterials which are usually started in the mild case in many people and they continue with that. So, as I told you in the first video, it's the oxygen saturation which keeps falling, which determines whether a person is the mild, moderate or the severe category as well as him being very unwell. So, there are a lot of videos and information available on the internet on how to increase the oxygen level in the blood without having to take extra oxygen by the oxygenator like lying flat on your chest and doing deep breathing exercises etc. So if you are someone who is RT-PCR positive and then you are slowly finding that the oxygen saturation level is going down then you please start doing these exercises and that I am sure will help you to prevent getting worse over the day because now with shortage of beds, people are panicking. So I think uh, that would be the first suggestion that I would make that you do prone breathing exercises. Then comes the second part, which is the anti-inflammatory part. Now the reason why COVID is so dangerous is because in many people, it is seen that suddenly the body starts attacking its own organs like the lung, the liver, the kidney, the intestines, the eyes and the brain. When an infection comes into the body, the body has protective mechanisms. These are in the form of various cells and chemicals. These chemicals are called cytokines and they alert the other immune cells in the body and they together they attack the virus and try to kill it. But in a certain number of people, it is seen that this protective mechanism goes overboard and suddenly starts attacking the body itself. That is called the cytokine storm. Now, how do we know if somebody is slowly tilting towards the cytokine storm or not? That is by monitoring the inflammatory markers. These are the CRP and the ferritin levels and a few other tests. So, while we are monitoring this and if it is seen that it is slowly going up, then we are getting a hint that the body is probably not being able to cope with this infection and that the cytokine storm is going to come or not. So if we feel that the cytokine storm is going to be arriving soon, then the most important treatment is the anti-inflammatory treatment, not remdesivir. Anti-inflammatory treatment is in the form of steroids, methylprednisolone or dexamethasone. Methylprednisolone is the best, but it is given IV. So for that, you need to go to the hospital or have somebody to give it to you IV. But dexamethasone is available easily in the shops and can be prescribed by your doctor. So that is a good substitute for the methylprednisolone and that will try to reduce the problem for you. Then comes the antiviral therapy in which remdesivir falls. Remdesivir is not like a magic treatment for COVID. It doesn't kill the virus which has already entered the body and causing all the damage. Remdesivir just helps to stop the further multiplication of the virus. So in that sense, it is inferior to anti-inflammatory therapy, which is the most important therapy. So I thought I will make the, you aware of this because unnecessarily people are panicking, thinking that remdesivir is the actual treatment or the most important treatment for COVID and they forget that the anti-inflammatory which is available easily everywhere is the most important treatment and the prone breathing exercises for improving the oxygenation which is continued in hospital is also something that can be done easily in the house. Then comes the anti-thrombotic which is to prevent coagulation 
and then the antibacterial treatment and various other things flu etc etc so please remember that oxygenation and your general health is the most important criteria you can do many things to improve the oxygenation in the home you don't have to worry about remdesivir because if you can keep your oxygenation level up without needing any external help i think you will be always in the mild category and all other problems can be taken care of and then comes the if somebody is getting slowly worse then they need anti inflammatory therapy started urgently so that is the steroids and then comes the uh, other medications so please remember all this try all the things that you can at home and be safe and be healthy thank you